this manga, Kagura Bachi, is one that low-key took over the manga community. I mean, damn, I've seen tweets comparing it to the fucking Bible. Now, that's obviously a joke, but it's clear if you've been on the internet for the last week that this manga has enormous expectations. Some might call it groundbreaking. And let me tell you, it did not meet those expectations, bro. Come on, people were overrating it 48 hours before the chapter even dropped, calling it the best new gen shonen, saying that it absolutely clears Boruto, Chainsaw Man, Jutsu Kaisen. Like, th th that's ridiculous. So I can't exactly say that Kagura Bachi is the best shit out right now, a complete 10 out of 10 masterpiece over every single fucking shonen manga coming out in the last five years, but I can tell you that it definitely has a solid and interesting start. The protagonist, Chihiro, lives with his dad as a sort of apprentice in the trade of swordsmithing. His pops, Kunishigi, is a renowned swordsmith, the most famous in the entire country, whose swords are especially unique, but we'll talk about that later. The two live a pretty simple life. They eat, they tend to their fishes, and they hammer away at iron. The only company seems to be Shiba, an old friend of Chihiro's old man. But then we get a three-year time jump, where we witness a couple of gangsters executing some rebels who are against their tyrannical rule. Just as these villains are about to step outside, the center man is met by a large slash across the chest. The dude on the right tries to intervene and gets his entire forearm completely amputated. I'm talking completely dismembered from his body. Before you can process this, the dude on the left also gets sliced up, all killed by an older Chihiro, now with a Tanjiro S scar and a sizable amount of contempt in his glare. One brutal ass beating later involving the entire group, which we'll get into in a little bit, don't worry. Shiba walks in and finds a dark room full of straight body after body, corpse after corpse, with Chihiro standing solitarily. He interrogates the leader of the group, demanding information on some Hishaku, who is probably the overarching antagonistic force of the story. And yeah, that is the entirety of the chapter. I want to first talk about the former half of the chapter. Already, and you probably know this throughout the video, the art is fantastic. It's hard to judge the longevity of it because of course the manga will go extra hard as the debut chapter, but damn does it look good right now. Kunishigi is a bit of an oddball character. One time he's a serious professional at his craft who crosses all his t's and dots all his eyes and the next he's talking to his fucking fishes one second he's bending his neck at a 90 degree angle and the next he's spitting the more dilemma of being a blacksmith which is actually a concept i find really interesting and i hope they delve deeper into it explore this theme further the purpose of a sword is to kill and as a swordsmith as someone who makes those weapons you have a responsibility to forge a sword for the right person giving someone a sword means bearing a weight on your shoulders someone will be felled by that blade and you bear some responsibility for that. It's a refreshing angle at the whole is violence truly the answer stick. Instead of looking at the issue from the eyes of a violent person, we see the question posed to one who supplies the tools to commit violence. I know, I just, I find the concept really cool. Shiba doesn't get too much time to shine as a character. He gives me the same vibes as Kunishigi, he's also kind of a nut job. I'm curious to see what his relationship with Kunishigi is actually like, seeing as he knows the secret nature of his craftsmanship. And speaking of that, we should probably start to talk about that scene. But before we get to that scene, and yes, I'm fucking blue ballsing you, let me just lay the context of said scene. See, the reason the two were even at the gangster base in the first place is because they got motivation from this. Yeah, what was once a peaceful town was invaded by a group known as the Koragumi Yakuza, and they made an example out of the rebel movement. It's definitely a horrific sight, horrific enough for Chihiro's sword to almost react at it, and the two infiltrate the Yakuza hideout. Well, <laughs> let's be honest, infiltrate is the wrong word here, because they did us just pull up, no sneaking, no tactical strategies, they just walk to the guys on watch duty and straight body them, it's fucking light work. But then we enter the warehouse, where everything goes down. Just before the lackeys make contact with Chihiro, Shiba explains how Kunishi enchanted his katanas with sorcery, granting them special abilities. In Chihiro's case, his katana's abilities, and get this, is the physical or spiritual manifestation of his dad's fishes. Fucking aquatic creatures just swimming around in the air. How fucking cool is that, bro? Notice how there's only two fishes here, the multicolored and the black one, but there's also a third in the fishbowl, the red fish. Well, I don't imagine Chihiro wanting to use that on these scum because its characteristic is to actually bring good luck. That being said, this scene is so fucking cold, bro. It's just a hero going on the fucking rampage, bro. He's just whooping ass with his fishes and his fucking black dark magic katana. It's so cool, man. It's so cool. It's so satisfying. And yeah, that is the debut chapter of Kagurabashi. This is a great chapter. I'm not completely hooked, but there's some potential here, and I'm really excited for how the story is going to progress. And yeah, thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Peace.